With the death of Aemon Cinder, there is no longer anyone to protect Jahiris. The slow and weak-minded to-be Emperor had no choice but to secure his assets, before there was an even the crown upon his head. Before he could even make his first royal decree, news came that Marine was in flames. By the news had actually reached the Isle, the city had already fallen, and the battle was becoming clear. Eris the Unworthy of the Copperhills had been told all his life that Majesty could win any battle, and win any title. And he took that chance. When Jaehaerys left Marine for his father's funeral, and his coronation, Eris wasted no time to secure his power base. On Majesty's back, he rode to the empty Pyramid of Marine and placed himself upon its throne. Many of the wealthy soon backed his ascent, though there were many great masters who didn't, and soon found themselves burning in dragonfire. Majesty was leashed upon that horrid city once again. For a full day and a full night, the burnings continued. Buildings, streets, people. Whatever had to be burned until Aeris Cinder had claimed his title. At the same time, another dragon rode south. Jaehaerys the White knew he, too, had to spring upon opportunity. Astapor had been promised to his brother, Valar, the odd sheep of Rhaegar's sons due to his red hair being born of a different mother, but still a valuable asset. Astapor was wealthy and had close ties to the regions around it, especially Gis. If anyone was to own it, it would be Jaehaerys. Unaware of the plots and plannings of his brother, Eris, he rode upon Gloombringer to Astapor, finding it well defended with many troops, yet none would raise arms against him. Instead, they seemed to welcome him with open arms. Valantian traders had sent word to the head of the Saviour Dragon, who would grant them new rights and powers in a reformed Valyrian Empire, so long as he held power. He would save them from the slow and foolish Emperor. Gloombringer took a rest at the top of the pyramid, claiming that mighty palace, but he did not rest alone. Soon, another dragon appeared, as a mighty Meraxes landed in the courtyard, ridden by Jaehaerys' mother. She had come not to scold the boy or warn him of things to come. The old and tired woman had come, in fact, to pledge herself to him. She had seen Aemon's madness, and worried it would pass down into his son. She knew that her second son was a bright and mighty warrior. She knew he had potential. The birthright to be king. To be emperor. She pledged herself to him. She pledged her dragon to him. She was old. She would not live long. But Meraxes was even older. Wiser and stronger. The most aged dragon still alive. With a size that would put majesty to shame. With his mother to beside him. It appeared that Jaehaerys' power could only grow. With the city claimed, Jaehaerys looked at the Valerian steel in his hand and thought little of it. It was a joke, really. Fact the legs. Named after a weak dragon ridden by a weak man. This was no blade of an emperor. There, in the court of Astapor, he did decree that his blade was named Doombringer. Named for the dragon that had claimed that city. And the dragon that would claim Illyria. Jaehaerys, son of Aemon, husband of Dana, found no time to be crowned, nor did he want to be. He would only place a crown upon his head when the pretenders to his title were dead. More news came to him. War was here. Aerys had claimed the throne of Illyria and would march with 20,000 men, some of the Silver Company, to fight at his side, as well as Majesty flying overhead. At the same time, Jaehaerys made his play. He did not announce his claim, instead he rode on Dragonback and burned the no man's land between him and Marine. He would not work with Eris, he would crush Eris, and then crush his nephew, and then wear the crown. Both men claimed the throne of Valyria, and both men knew they could only earn it by destroying the other. Jaehaerys the White was not alone. With him, Valantis rose. The nation was beaten from a war against Dothrak hordes, but they still had ships and some army left toward mountain offensive, as well as coin to fund the potential king. Valantis also helped send word to Bravos, and soon, 
10,000 members of the Golden Company would arrive in Astapor to help Jahiris' claim. Two massive armies were rising, and the Emperor had to fight back or be crushed. The armies of Illyria were risen, given orders to meet in the capital and Tolos. Velekos, Iphelix, and Quicksilver were all risen from the Dragon Pit, ready to be ridden into war. Two fully grown dragons, and one young dragon with the potential to prove itself. Dana had not ridden her dragon for some time, yet the two held a bond unlike any other. She would die to defend their daughter's ascension to the throne, or whatever son would come after her. They would not be denied. Dana was certain of it. Together they held three fully grown dragons, and with the merchants pledging to their side, they also held 30,000 men at full strength. Jaehaerys knew they would not all make it out of this. This was a dance of dragons. There would be many casualties, but the Emperor was determined to win. With fully grown dragons supporting each side, it had become clear. This war would consume them all. There could be only one winner. Hello guys, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones, where we find ourselves in the midst of a war of dragons. As north of Illyria, the throne that our father and grandfather built finds itself attacked by two usurpers. Uh, Lord Eris, known as the Unworthy, because he is indeed unworthy, rides upon majesty, and while he used to own the Copper Hills, he has now given those away to his brother, because in the ensuance of the, uh, the coronation, and in the death of my father, there was enough time for him to seize the city for himself on Dragonback, giving him 24,000 men to work with. But the true threat, I believe, is here in Astapor. Styling himself as King now, King Jaehaerys of Astapor, it's known to be a genius, incredible tactician in battle, an amazing fighter. And while that 25k doesn't compare with the troops of Marine, or is too close to the troops of Marine and doesn't compare with our own, they have managed to seize Volantis as an ally. Volantis is weak at the moment, they don't have many army levies, but this is because they are dealing with uh, raiders. If they can take out these raiders, and it's a slave raider apparently doing, they will put themselves in a prime position to aid here. So essentially, this is almost a war of attrition that we have to survive and fight. Well, they survive and fight, and they survive and fight. We have to outlast them, and I believe we win. So perhaps I may just make all my troops come here to Illyria and Tolos and fight only in these regions rather than go on an offensive. Or I could try and take a quick offensive and siege Marine. The true problem is with dragons. So let's take a look. I can call for dragon riders. Uh, I don't want to do that because then that means somebody will automatically try and take uh, my father's dragon because Vaxlix is currently not ridden. We can see that here. Vaxlix is currently wild. Uh, a fully grown dragon. And of course his children Iphelix is ridden by me but is still very young so it won't be much help in the war to come. In fact, let's look at these Dragon Riders. Gloombringer is going to be a real threat. Gloombringer is ridden by King Jaehaerys, who has renamed his own blade, which my father lovingly called Thaxalix for him, to Gloombringer. This Valyrian steel, which he claims gives him the right of throne. Well, we'll have to see about that. Yeah, he is married to a child, so they've not yet had any children of their own, but... He also is married to Helissa, who does not ride a dragon. So he struggles a bit when it comes to dragon riders. Vescolos is ridden by my wife, Dana. So we have one fully grown dragon on our side. And obviously Iphelix is ridden by me. Majesty is ridden in Marine. And Majesty is, I believe, probably one of the oldest... Yeah, obviously Marax is going to be older, but he is one of the oldest dragons. He, she is one of the oldest dragons left. D4 Marshal now in incredible danger if Eris is riding them. Quicksilver is in my ranks under Malus Magier, who is one of my commanders. So, again, we now have two fully grown dragons on our side. 
I believe White Claw is off somewhere else. Uh, so is Vaiklik. Wow, they've got two dragons on that random island. They've got three dragons. They have Terax as well. And Valerian is... Uh, it only belongs to the Darklands for some reason. Maraxis, however, is the other dragon in the service of Astapor. So they also do have a fully grown dragon. Two fully grown dragons, in fact. Uh, Maraxis is the oldest and deadliest Mirax is going to be a real danger, ridden by my grandmother, who has chosen the side of Jaehaerys, which is a big statement to make. But Vaxelix is unclaimed. Most likely will be claimed by someone on my side, which could be very useful, but I'm not going to use the decision to force it. I want to see whether that be natural. Uh, we have uh, Tycon, who is Vaxelix's child, a grand, uh, grandchild of majesty, and is ridden by no one. But they are in Illyria, so they are also one that could be tamed. Volon, another one in Illyria, who is Maraxes and uh, or is Quicksilver's child, and uh, Valax's brother. And then there is a dragon egg belonging to Vistenia of Marine. If this one was to hatch a while ago, it would have been a threat. But the fact that Vistenia still hasn't hatched it, it gives us a very strong chance against Marine, who has dragons, but not many dragons. So this is the situation. It's a little janky to make it a three-way war. I've had to give each other, uh, give them claims on each other, and essentially have to have these conflicting wars uh, where they're obviously both hostile and linked as enemies to each other. Um, so yeah, they will be conflicting wars, so they will fight each other. So it is technically a three-way war, but we'll, I don't know if they will fully fight each other, which would be smart anyway as I do have the largest army. Let's get right into this then. Let's get our armies united in Tolos and then I want to think about what we're going to do with this 16k. I should be leading this 16k I think. In fact I don't know why I'm not. I know I'm a shit commander but I should still be leading it and then I want Tristan on my on one side and you know I and Dana on the other and then this land army can be ridden by uh, Maleris, who has the other dragon. And then we'll have Daeron and uh, this Imperial Guard alongside her. Yeah, get these armies united. So we have two dragon flying armies. Could be really helpful for us. Oh, Astapor's in the gonna have a big problem that basically. Their two largest vassals haven't run for them. This is Lord Valar. It makes sense that Lord Valar hasn't risen for him. Uh, obviously, Lord Valar, my other uncle uh, from my father's second marriage. He was promised Astapor and was never given it because of this situation. And by not being given Astapor, it makes sense that he would rise in this way, especially since he's a lunatic. But he doesn't have that many men. I don't think this would affect Astapor too badly. Uh, Lord Tristan One Eye has used the tensor of the feast to present a position for the court. He claims that Veneris Ladoras had one of his kinsmen murdered. Uh, yeah, we'll arrest her for that. Nobody's killing Tristan's kin. Uh, fine. All right, let's get these armies together, especially since Tristan's uh, staying loyal with us. Um. Lisa, she can repay me later. I don't especially care about. Uh, we'll give her a, a house arrest. Can already see a huge army here, a huge death stack. Twenty k troops from Marine. We need to meet in Tolos quick, and then I think maybe we evacuate Tolos and we just try and fight on Illyria. Because I don't see us standing much of a chance against... Unless... My ultimate option would be to bring this 16k down to fight this army early on. Maybe, maybe, if I can wipe Marine in one battle, that would be helpful. But Marine has majesty. Marine has arguably the strong, one of the strongest dragons. Like Both sides have an incredibly strong dragon in their army. But this army would have... Even three, or they would have three dragons, yeah. Mm. And he's not leading this army by the looks of it. Where's his personal army? It says he's not leading it. Maybe we attack because he's not leading this army then. All right, let's see if we can move the move our tr troops quick enough. 
Right, let's get these embarked, get these in Tolos. Merge, and we'll see if we can meet them in the Black Cliffs. Ah, oh, he's going to try and retreat, but I think we've caught him here. Uh, let's see if we can get Visenya an extra trait. Hey, extra learning. That's not bad. Oh, yeah, we can absolutely crush them here. Oh, we've inherited the Demon Pass because the Kinslayer of the Borash has died. Uh, well, mid-war, but I will have to deal with this. Borash will revert to the Emperor. So it's between his wife who had no children with him. Did he have a first wife? He did, who had no children. Incredible work. And his very first wife also had no children. So what is his claim? Oh, a brother. Then yeah, you can have it. You are the brother. News from Marine, Your Majesty. A new dragon has entered the world. Ah, uh, this is very late for them, but it could have been helpful earlier. But Visenya now has a dragon. The He Dragon Firecatcher. That's a sick name. Okay, we can send the this army. I knew that this was going to stack him. So it's, this is just the game fucking up a little bit. So he randomly had his king on this army, but now his king's going to fight in this army. The Majesty is fighting in this battle. Oh my goodness, Majesty dealt us huge morale hit early. Oh my god, that's why Majesty's a threat. We actually had that battle basically won, but... Jesus. Emperor Chahiris and what is this, my second wife? Yeah, Bahara. Baina Agor. This is... Yeah, I was going to say, this, this kid is not meant to be, because he is... Yeah, ugh. Losing the very first, the losing the first major battle is going to be a big hit for us. Are right, we going to have to retreat back? Where is Astapor's armies? Atlantis is on my capital, but they don't have enough to siege it. Where? Oh, here's Astapor. He's taking a long way round. Let us. I want to get down to Melior March, and I think I'm going to sail back to my capital from Melior March. Get the king back in charge of this army. Get Tristan there. Get... Where's my wife again? There she is. We need to be leading these armies. Using whatever dragons we have available to us. But Borash is going to fall here. Oh, that's supposed to go in a long way round. He's going to take us from both sides here. We have to, we have to get out of here. God, I, I, I knew Majesty was going to be a threat. But that morale hit for a Majesty being used in battle. Huge, huge morale hit. I think we just have to sit on Illyria for a while until an opportunity presents itself. Is there a siege in Marine? Uh, my sister Neris will get a decent education. And she will get a diplomacy. No, Marshall seems bad because I mean they already have such good Marshall. Let's continue on that path. He really has taken a long way round. Does he not have enough ships? I mean, ships could be a problem for him. I think ships could probably be a problem for any of them. Because ships in general in this game you never seem to have enough of. I'm gonna... You want to sit my... No, I'll just pay... I'll pay him to keep him out of this. The dragon of Achilles is a ravenous beast. Oh my god. We'll take the revolt risk. Vercellus has to calm down here. I just want to pay tribute just because I can't fight. Oh, is there going to be a battle here in the Black Cliffs? But it's not, it's not his army with Majesty. Or with uh, his main dragons. He's going to lose this bad, surely. Not unless. Majesty's been slain. During the war in Astapor, the dragon riders of Lord Paramount Aerys Cinder, Rider of Majesty, and Dawurk Queen Magier, um, uh, Magier, Rider of Maraxis, met in fierce combat, driving their dragons to treat each other relentlessly. Dawurk Queen Elena and Maraxis prevailed, killing Majesty. The symbol of the Empire is dead. The keep is named after her. The symbol of Rhaegar Cinder is dead. Slain and dragon by the oldest living dragon. No doubt, that is why. That sheer power. 
His the grandmother, the wife of Rhaegar, has slain Rhaegar's dragon. What a dance that must have been. But is it going to win them the battle? Yes, it is. And she dies soon after. Oh no, that's that. Yeah, so she, she died while leading troops in battle. I assume probably killed by the commander of marine. That's a huge hit. So that means that um, the dragon's just gonna fly off. Maraxes is now a wild dragon. That's a huge battle. And of course, they're gonna start sieging Tolos. I think I have to. F <sighs> I can't fight them in Tolos. I think I land in Mantaris and fight them. Uh, sure, fine, you can become Lord Treasurer. Oh my goodness, they're just going to make a huge chance of this. I'll drive them from the realm. I'll take care of them. They're going to take some time having to siege Tolos anyway. Tolos is incredibly well defended. Oh, he's calling for dragon riders. Someone, someone to ride on um, Quicksilver, or on Maraxis rather. And he has a rider. That's bad for me. I think we have to take the fight. Flying high above fighting armies, the Dragon Rider King Jaehaerys leads a dive attack on you and your allies. He will perish. We shall meet him in dragon combat. Gloombringer will fight against my dragon. We shall cast them down. And my and uh, Vascus will, will help me. So it's two against one in this dragon riding fight. He, he struggled to compete with your dragon's relentless attacks. Several times I was falling from the sky. Now they add our mercy and we can die for the kill. This. You pick out Gloombringer and her rider and drive straight at them. They manage to dodge Iflick's most lethal uh, swipes and bursts to fire and escape my grasp. A new phase of fighting begins, and after a long charge, the dragons meet in vicious combat, clawing at each other's flesh and sending red-hot dragon flame to try and burn down the enemy riders. The armies below watch in awe as the dance unfolds. God, he's going to move in the kill on me now. The Scarlet and her rider are left weakened and vulnerable, and Gloombringer does not hesitate in finishing them off. Gloombringer dives at them, crashing into them at great speed. They are ripped apart and eventually crash into the ground, and are left dazed. The Chaos, the child of majesty, is no more. A lifeless corpse. A new stage of fighting shall begin. And my, and my wife is captured. Dana was captured in that fight. And after a long charge, the dragons will meet once more. Me and him. He's going to move in the kill on me now. We are not dead yet. We shall cast him down. Dracarys. Damn it, he, he, Gloombringer, is, it's, it's because he's older. He's just too elusive. We shall keep up the fight. Damn. He's going to keep triggering over and over again, but... Ah... Uh, Unbelievable. Fire and blood. After slaying my wife, you pick out Gloombringer and just as she's, she and its rider can be finished off. You and Iphelix dive headlong into them, sending them crashing into the ground, while your dragon tears them apart. They are left dazed, with Gloombringer's lifeless corpse sprawled upon the ground. Fire and blood. And I have reclaimed Gloombringer. We shall not grant him a funeral for his treachery. Can repay I free my wife. The duel is over. The enemy dragons have finally been cast down. Their armies lose heart at the sight of the spectacle, and you can now turn your attention to them. Our names shall live as legend. Oh, and he wants me to pay my My uncle's debt. Um, national tax what if I would decrease? I'm going to say five years on it because I cannot pay that now. We will struggle with the demand size limit for a bit, but I don't think I want to deal with this until we've taken out Marine. 
which I mean makes sense. We shouldn't be doing anything until we've taken out Marine. Uh, but we're going to need a new king for Astapor. Already, Cinder went from having three kingdoms to now only two. And the dragons are dying so fast. Again, we said the whole time the only thing that can take down this house is itself. And what a surprise that we are destroying all of the dragons that once stood with us. They now all find themselves dying and rotting. Why does it close itself? That's very weird. We're going to siege back Marine. This battle should be ours. We can take down this fleet. We don't need it. I assume that's probably the Golden Company fleet he hired. We're going to be losing a lot of money in the second half of this war. Um, My wife... I could gift her with the Family Blade because our daughter will just get it anyway, right? At least she should. Yeah, you know what? I will grant you a Cinder Heirloom. For your fighting in battle, I shall grant you... Uh, although I will name it. I'm going to rename it first. What should I rename it after? Hmm. I'm going to name it after Majesty. Because Majesty died in this war. And even though Majesty was used by my enemies against me. It feels right to have a blade named after Majesty. So we're going to rename Gloombringer to Majesty. I mean, truthfully, with, with Gloombringer, having that dragon, I really thought that there was a huge chance of victory. Oh, a new dragon rider. It is... Uh, she's... she's Flamed Fatsalek. <laughs> Very impressive, honestly. She lost her first dragon. She lost Vescaeus, and now she has a new dragon, Vaxalex, to ride. I'm, I'm very impressed. My wife, who was supposedly being slow, has been very, very smart and impressive. Oh, this is a problem. This is what's annoying me. It's how quickly Volantis is colonizing all of these regions. We're eventually going to have to go to war with the, for these, I think, because we want to own all of Valyria, and they are claiming a significant portion of Valyria. Right, let us... I cannot deploy the dragon in the siege. Oh, because my dragon's maimed. Um, let's get my wife back on this, if I can. My aunt now rides Takoon into battle. Um, am I not able to use my wife as a commander anymore? Do I need to list her as a commander? Hmm. I thought I'd be able to. Get Mei Listen. Is her dragon still alive? Yeah, Quicksilver's still alive. Oh, that's a specific view my dragon. Okay, so I'll just have to wait until if Elix isn't maimed. It'll take a long time, but it, it, it will happen. It will slowly fade away. What a a victory that is, though. I mean, he was the real threat with Gloombringer. Reclaiming Astapor is going to do us a massive wonder of good for this war. And honestly, if once we take care of Marine, my eyes will turn to Volantis. We cannot have them claiming these lands. We need to shut them off from it. Definitely, Volantis is going to be a threat. In fact, the, 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 we're technically still at war with Volantis? No, we're not. We're at war with... Specifically, old Volantis. That must be a glitch. I'm going to assume it's a glitch. Either that or... Do one of them own land in old Volantis? Marine owns land in old Volantis. I don't know how that's happened. Uh, maybe a, a glitch? Or maybe that's an actual thing. It might be an actual thing. Like a trade agreement or something. Not sure. Regal wants to marry my aunt. Um, so he wants to marry his aunt. Um, sure, why not? Yeah, she was the marry. I mean, she never had a child with... Um, she never ended up having a child with her first husband, with Jaehaerys, because she was so young that she's only just come of age. 
the exact time he dies. I think Regal. Currently, I've given him the Black Cliffs. I'm going to take the Black Cliffs from him and give him Astapor. Because he's been loyal, so it makes sense to, to reward him. Tristan's probably going to lose Anagari here, but we'll give him a bit of money to rebuild it back up, so that should be fine. Yes, playing Astapor has see, has won us this war. It was all done. That battle was so close. Having two dragons is what really, you know, was able to get us the victory there. Because if we didn't have both dragons, I think we'd definitely lose there. Yeah, we need to re-secure these. Are these all still colonies? No, they're, they're not colonies? Do Volantis just not make colonies? Are they just that good that none of them are colonies? Because all of mine are still colonies. Well, this isn't. Melio March isn't, but Zocross still is. Or an outpost at the moment. So yeah, outpost. And uh, this one's finished. So I, can, I, could, I could start on the Howling Bogs, but I don't have the cash. Uh, we'll, when we finish the war, we'll reevaluate what we should be taking of these. Do I own a... I don't... Yeah, I don't need the Plaza of Pride. Create a new vassal there. My child seems mad because she's paranoid. At least she's not slow. That's something she would have picked up from both of us. Petrov can marry. Uh, my sister and my uncle. Sure. Oh no, he's he will get Astapor because he was promised Astapor. I could give Marine to Rhaegal though, because I do need somebody to control Marine. And then I want to give uh, Draconis, uh, since it is, it's not finished yet, it's still a colony. When Draconis is finished, I want to give it to, uh, and I got, uh, to Tristan. And then I want to give these to Tristan as well. Give him basically these four, if possible. They see snow. Why do I have a Northman in my court? And then Mother is still at the wall. What an interesting situation that one is. Let's move our navy to get ready to enter Marine. I don't care about my court here. Just get the cheap option. My fate spans probably my wife is pregnant. Let's hope for a son. Um... I think we go with diplomacy. I want to take a look at the dragons now. Because we've lost a lot of dragons. We still have... We own Iphelix and we own Quicksilver through a fighter of us. White Claw and... The Tacoon is... Uh, who rides Tacoon? My aunt rides Tacoon. So the... One who's married Rhaegal. Uh, Valex is Valex. Terax is elsewhere. I ride Faxalix. So no, my wife rides Faxalix now. Claimed from my father. Which, fair enough. I'm glad it's back in the family. The Darklands rider. And Meraxes is ridden by this random dude who... Am I able to invite him to my court? No, because he does own a title. So he's going to be loyal to whoever owns Yunkai. So that's going to be a big boon to whoever owns Yunkai. And then Firecatcher is ridden by my aunt through Eris. Yep. Oh, 200 gold. Draconis has been nothing but, but trouble. This, this place will not finish. I, like, just it is permanently permanently going. Yeah, let's get my wife resting. When the hell is this colony going to be finished? It's just permanently needing more and more gold pumped into it. Siege of Graces. Okay, we should be so close now, surely. I didn't call him, did I? Oh, he's just, he's joined with Marine. Okay, makes sense. See, I feel like he did this a bit late, man. I don't think Marine's got much more chance here. He's only got, like, 5,000 men left. Yeah, 5,000 men exactly, in fact. Is he 
In an army. No, he's he's in the capital, so I should just keep sieging. I mean, at this point, the war is a victory. There was been a victory since that battle, but that battle was a huge battle. That's probably the mo the closest I've ever seen to Balgo, because we were actually zero on morale. But we managed to kill him in battle. I mean, you know, once he's dead in battle, that's a claim done, because he doesn't even have a son. I have a new heir, Eamon Cinder. Uh, can I... Am I not able to rename him? Why can I not rename my son? That's... I. Is there an option to... Rename him. Because I don't want to call him Aymond. I don't... Okay. I don't have the option to rename him. So he's Aymond. <laughs> I was wanted to call him like a Volantian name. But... Okay. Uh, next generation, I guess, will change the names then. That's a bit annoying. Um... I'm on my best at. The only things I'm good at is Thrift and Mark Matra. Let's go for duty. Go on. Do your duty. We're losing a lot of money the longer this goes on for. If Felix has been unable to fly. The long, the, the severe injury he suffered keeping him grounded. Today he was fighting to the skies once again, and seems well on the way to recovery, so he's no longer maimed. But he's just wounded. But, that is an absolutely beautiful picture they've chosen for him. Aphelix looks so sick with that, I love that a lot. An obedient dragon too. Really, really cool looking. Now we can ask for help in the siege. It's only a 5% chance. And they didn't get maimed, wonderful. Just because we need to siege up this sieging a bit. Yeah, we're gonna. This family's forever gonna be poor fighters because we never get like a good fighter in the chain who can actually teach others how to fight. And they're gonna take the dragon pass here, or demon pass rather. He's been cap- oh, he actually managed to completely capture Borash. Damn. Uh, let's hope Berlioz is kept alive at least. Because otherwise we've lost a whole family there. It has been a trouble with just how many losses we faced during the war as well. Oh my god, I'm not, I'm not paying anyone's interest because I- in the middle of a war. A new dragon egg. Um, in your new colony. Oh, so this isn't born of any of my dragons. This is just a new dragon egg. Do I sell it? Let's have a think here. I don't have a dragon egg for Aemond, right? I do not. There is no dragon egg for Aemond. Um, I think maybe I keep it then. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. And we're going to grant it to uh, Aemond. Because I, I do like the idea I know that there's this, this idea that oh, the sun should get the dragon, but that's not really completely true. The sun doesn't I mean, even during most of the time of the Iron Throne, the sun no, the, it, you get a flip-flop when it comes to dragons. Not every king didn't ride Valerian. A few quite a few kings rode Valerian. No doubt about that. But not every king rode Valerian. And then obviously he died, so nobody else rode Valerian. God, he's losing more and more men with every day of his siege. God, I would need three more two more castles in Marine. He's tortured. No, we have to. We're just gonna have to take out his armies. We'll go back to Marine later. I think we just kill his armies here. This has gone on too long. He's just hiding in Marine like a coward because he no longer rides a dragon. Uh, 
I'm going to try and flee into Yunkai. He wants to offer peace. A white peace under these terms. I could capture him and smoke him out, though. But he's so weak. And the only dragon now is his wife. I don't want to be the end of House Cinder. I think I will show mercy. And I will bring us to an end of war as well. And oh, we can take care of this. Raider army. And we'll decide a new council. So for Astapor, we're going to grant it to him. Oh, I forgot to also grant him the vassals. What do I have to do? Transfer vassalage of... What's this dude's name? Slaver's Road. I'll revoke his royal privilege, though. Because I don't want any kings. The royal privilege was granted to... Um, the former king. Transfer vassalage of Slaver's Road. All of them hate me, which does not surprise me. Well, Slaver's Road. Okay, I'll just go off his name. That is an important... Drasnys. Okay. There you go. And then I still own these, so we'll also grant you... I should have just done the include lower titles in the first place, but I wasn't being very smart. So it's the Lordship of Astapor first. And... Lordship of Giscar Point. This is the reward for not rising against me. Uh, and then I may switch to him and make him change his capital to Astapor, as that should be his capital. Take this fleet back home. He can keep Marine, but I'm going to make him release this vassal. And I'm going to give Yunkai to Rhaegar. So we're going to do uh, a pause, and then I will show you the new world. And then we may call it there for the episode, because this has been a very long war. But let's quickly uh, fix up the realm a little bit. Okay, and we are back with a new status quo. Uh, with the amount of debt we have to repair, I decided we're not going to expand just yet, especially since we still have two colonies. We have uh, Zoklos and Draconis we have to finish before we can consider giving these two away and continue to expand, because I'm not giving away Melior much. As I've mentioned many times, I love having these four. I think having these four is what we're going to keep doing all the way until we get Valyria. Because, to me, that's most important. I've seen people say maybe I should have a capital in Gis. Not really. Gis was just a freehold. I mean, it was a very powerful freehold. But in in a matter and way that doesn't matter, especially. So, how have the lands been given out then? Well, of course, we are going to be rewarding Tristan and his uh, family. So, I say his family because he has his heir, Jibero. Uh, we'll be rewarding them with Draconis when it is finished. Um, Borash is still in jail. Hopefully I can... Am I able to free him? I can only... Yeah, because he's not in my jail. He's in... Um, this jail. So hopefully we can get him... Yeah, we can get... He's in Eris's jail. Hopefully we can get him out of there. But I've given them back the Painted Valleys. Of course, he's keeping Marine. But as part of the peace deal, he is forfeited vassalage over the these lands which have been given to Regal, who has his own dragon, by the way, uh, uh, Zuvda, only two years old. But uh, he's super loyal because he's been given this title and because he's been given this wealth. And because of that loyalty, we once more have a loyal dragon on our side. And not only a loyal dragon, a loyal kingdom, which we also have in Astapor. However, Valar has not even tried to learn to ride a dragon, which is interesting. Uh, these realms are going to be devastated in terms of troops for a long time, which is good for us. The only arm, in fact, even Marine's going to be devastated. The only army right now is our own, although it's still very weak. So I don't think we could do anything against Volantis just yet. Why do I own this? I really don't know why I own that. Oh well. 
I'll ask a question of Alantis a bit later. Uh, I've also granted the Black Cliffs to uh, Fasalo. He's the man who has Maraxes, which for some reason is over there, but I think it will return to him in a second. Uh, let's get these back in port, and we'll disband them, and the Golden Company ones will disappear. Nope, they... They just flat out killed him. They just killed him. Wow. I'm going to have to ask questions of Eris, because this dude's absolutely insane. Well, I don't know who... I can reforge the sword. Um... What does reforging do? I'm going to quickly look this up. But um, what I was saying is, him killing that is a problem, because I don't have many people I could give it to. So I'm not sure what the point would be. And my, my, my problem is, if there's nobody to give the province to, and they just keep dying over and over again, then we're kind of fucked. And... Ugh. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to reforge this because I don't know. I'll have a look at what forging means. We'll do that another time. But I need to grant this away now. Who the hell to? If I could give it to my wife, I would. But despite me changing the laws so that women can inherit, they can't be given titles, which is a problem. Maybe if I increased it to high realm authority, they'd be able to... Yeah, because the council has no power. I think in general I should increase the realm authority just because I won the war. So we're going to do that, because, fuck you, I won the war. I need better realm authority. I could change taxes up a bit, but I don't see much point in doing that for now. I need to give this land away. Let me look at my courtiers. Is there anyone who really deserves it? And is male. Is he male? He is. Who is his... Who is a saucy Valyrian, so I'm going to give it to him anyway. <laughs> Because I have no other reason not to. High Lordship of... Okay, yeah, it's that High Lordship, so we can't include lower titles with it. So we're actually just going to give him Lordship of Demon Pass. Then you know what? Maybe I could give him the... Mm. No, Demon Pass just seems like the most logical place for the capital rather than the coast. But you know what? No, I'll give him the High Lordship without the lower title, so I keep Mentalis. That works for me. He wants to buy one of my slaves? 150 gold. Well, I'm glad the price is outrageous. I wasn't going to sell it anyway, in all honesty. But let you have no man's land. Wh whose prison is he in? Again, in Eris. Everyone just has everyone in prison, by the looks of it. Uh, I need a King's Justice. Sure. Is there any mage title I'm missing? I don't have a regent. Um, can I not make my wife my regent? I thought that would be a possibility. A range betrothal. My aunt and my brother. Sure. There we go. Ifelix is back to full strength. I would have thought my wife would be in this list. Is she not? No, there she is. Yeah. She's absolutely my regent. I have no reason for her not to be my regent. And we'll give her a... Yeah, Marshall. Marshall focus. Does she have a dragon? No. I'll, I'll pay his interest. It's barely any gold, but... The fact all of my cousins have interest, and all of my brothers have interest, that's a lot. I can demand his, my kin's release.
My kinsman executed. He ignored my demand for my kin's release. Yeah, this dude's gonna have to die later. <laughs> you get bloody vengeance on him or I could do a dragon conquest. I don't want to do either just yet. All non volumin processes in Yunkai control by experience of religious unrest. Interesting. Sounds to get some religious unrest. Well, there's still problems that need to be asked of. Oh, I'm gonna have to deal with this, aren't I? Where do I have enough men to deal with this? Because I don't want to raise many. Okay, we will raise these. Say I want to ask the poor and just take care of this. That's good. I'm, I'm, I, we're, we're building very good relations with Regal, which is good. It's widely known that you hold huge on many titles. And the source of perhaps you would... Um... Oh, I forgot to give him the... That's my fault. I didn't give him the duchy. Uh, that's fine. Um, sure. You can be recognized. You don't have to be a bastard anymore. That's fine with me. Betrove can marry. Yep. Let's send a dragon on those guys. That's probably going to wipe them. We... W w I think this has been a very interesting... I, I truly believe that the most likely outcome would be a win for Astapor here. But a win for Jaehaerys really legitimizes him. Oh, and he's Australian wounded. Well, oh, and got a sixth scar. There you go. We love having six scars. And with him legitimized, we are in a very good position because he's still young. Sure, he's slow, but I mean. He won. He defeated his brother in the air on Ifelix. That's going to give Ifelix a lot of praise and renown as well to be able to slay a dragon much, much older than Ifelix was as well. That has to be noted. I'm I'm truly interested to see the path of where we can go with Jahiris now. We're going to have to spend some time sitting and not doing anything as we rebuild our army because our army... It's going to take a long time to recover. It's taken a lot of damage, and that damage is not going to be so quickly restored. We're going to begin looking at building options, where we can build, what we can build, and we're going to start looking towards our next expansion route. Let me know, guys. Should we look towards New Gis? Towards Volantis? Towards these regions up here? Or should we sit on our riches and try and delve even deeper into Valyria? Thank you guys so much for all of your support on the series. It means the world to me to have all of the, the support and the love that we've had on this. And I'm loving this series and I just want to keep going. This has been one of my favourite ones to film, this war. And I cannot wait for you guys to see it. So I'm going to get right on editing it right away, basically. There is so much to say and so much to be done. And I cannot wait to see North of Illyria continue to expand. Please leave me a like, leave me a comment. All comments really help me know how you guys feel about the series. And if you want to see the next episode now, and you're not a page, and you're not watching this on Patreon, because some of you will be watching this on Patreon, then you can join the Patreon and see episodes a week early. And if you are on my Patreon, thank you so much for all of your support. That is it for this week. Next week we continue the growth of Emperor Chihiris and his wife Dana as they have established the true power and wealth of Illyria. None can doubt that House Cinder rules supreme, even over itself. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then. <laughs>